uh, on this side. I'll do it. Love you, sis. Praise God. Love you so much. Love you. Beloved, it's got to tell you something that y'all just got. Did you get it before? Hallelujah. What? What? This lady that we had that helped that when we had one in here, she did the uh, six Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is Lord. Amen. Brother Logan, been praying for you. Praise God. It's so good to see you, bro. Hallelujah. Hey, Auntie. Amen. Hey, Brother David. We, it's time. It's 635. 635. Uh, huh? Church starts at 630. Amen. Church starts at 6.30, hallelujah. Sister Kathy, how are you, Brother William? How are you doing? Praise God. Man, you all look fantastic. Glory to God. You know, what I love about being around worshipers is you could feel the anointing of God. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you make this job easy. Hallelujah. You do. You make this job easy. You can never have an excuse not to have a word for God's holy people because Holy Spirit's just beaming. You know what I mean? So I'm just so thankful. Uh, Let's get into prayer and uh, please pray for me. As you, I don't know if you saw, Brother David was signaling me because he's been wanting to pray over me in the prayer room, but we got busy and um, it just happens, right? So yes, exactly. So please uh, keep, keep, amen, hallelujah, please. So let's just pray, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of eternity for Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, it's beyond our prayers, beyond our worship of who you truly are. We know, Lord Jesus, that you are our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our God. But, Father, it's even beyond that. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, in moments like this, that as we worship you and lifting up your name, Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, we can feel your anointing flowing through your church, your holy people. So, Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much right now that you give us the power to bind up every demonic spirit. Father, we... De we rebuke every demonic stronghold. Father God, the deceiver has no voice. He has no right. He has no power over your blood, Lord Jesus Christ. So right now together we're going to say this. I bind up every foul thing that does not belong to God Almighty in Jesus Christ my Lord. And all of God's beloved said, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Praise God. Our worship service this evening is titled, 
it happened. Um, we're going to go into 1 Peter 2.9. We're going to open with that. But then the beauty is we're going to close with that as well. So we're going to go pretty fast as far as through this worship service because there's a lot to go through. Of course, many of you are like, when, there, when, is it, <laughs> when isn't there a lot to go through? Amen. And I'm just so thankful that you all are here on a Wednesday evening. We've been having beautiful weather, huh? Praise God. And I'm just so thankful for that. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, uh, today God blessed me with this song. And I know we got so much to go through, but I got to do it because God said I can do it. So I'm just so excited. Amen. And the song goes, and I didn't get to practice it much because it, it, it was a busy day. And God blessed me with this song. And the song goes like this. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and, you're no, and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. Hallelujah. It's so great to see everybody smile. Hallelujah. Right, Brother Logan? Put a smile on your face. Praise God. Um, I'm going to ask the elders right now, since I already have Elder Howard back there, keep Sister Charlotte in prayer. I know we have. Amen. Praise God. We're believing no surgeries. That, that, that healing anointing right now is flowing through her body in Jesus' name. By the blood of Lord Jesus, Elder Howard, we believe that and we stand in agreement. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I hear the amen. So, hallelujah. I believe that. Elder Charlie's here. I'm going to ask the elders if we could put cameras up here. So that it would show you all during worship services. And I think that would be great. Because you kind of get in my shoes as far as what I'm looking at when I'm trying to worship with you all, right? Right? I'm worshiping a good and perfect daddy. Amen? Hallelujah. And I know he's good and perfect, right? Because it doesn't matter how I feel or what's going on. Amen? Say it with me. It happened. Oh, praise God, it happened. So we're going to open up 1 Peter. These are the two books that God brought to me today that we're going to go into. However, as we go into 2 Samuel 11, we're going to go back a book in 1 Samuel, and we have to in interject these three books. Now, I know it's all from the same book, but the three different chapters, and they're all different verses. And there's going to be a reason why, because we're talking about Brother David. In 1 Peter 2.9, we're going to go fast once again. It happened. I'm going to explain, but when I say it happened, I'm asking you whether you want to say it out loud. Listen, this is Holy Spirit's church. You do what God lays on your heart. Can you get an amen? There's no religion here. It's a relationship. Hallelujah. It's a relationship with God. Woo, hallelujah. Don't you love it when you know that God just loves you so much? Right? You don't rely on a preacher. You don't rely on a message. You don't have to go on YouTube and pull up a message to make you feel good. You know that Jesus is Lord and he lives in you. Right, Sister Melissa? And you know that his presence is in you and you know that no matter what, my God is for me and he loves me. Amen? Can I get an amen? Oh, my goodness. I love shaking like that, brother. We almost shook the microphone off. Praise God. So we're in 1 Peter 2.9. Like I said, we're going to go real quick. Now, this is Peter now. You guys know Peter, disciple Peter? Come on now. Right? He's been through a lot. Right? Peter is, is, is a brother that he's quick-tempered. You know, I, I have a lot of close family that say that I'm a lot like him. And, and Paul, Saul of Tarsus, Paul. And I find it a compliment because it's passionate. Right? Just passionate. Right? Say that word with me. Passionate. Are you passionate for Jesus? Huh? If you're not passionate for Jesus, I want to know what's going on in your life. What's wrong? Right? Something wrong? You going to be Mr. And Mrs. Wong? Mr. And Mrs. Wong, what's wrong? Huh? Get passionate for Jesus. Amen? And this is what Peter said. Hallelujah. Now, you got to remember, Peter... You know he denied Jesus, right? But then at the same time, Peter had the revelation from Father. Say his name, Father. Peter had the revelation from Father of who Jesus is. Because Lord Jesus said, who do you say I am? Oh, my goodness. And Peter said, you are the Messiah, right? You are God. You are Lord. Amen? And it was that revelation that Lord Jesus Christ said, only this can come from the Father. 
And of course, you also know that Peter rebuked Jesus. How dare you? He done lost his mind, right? <laughs> Brother William feels it, right? Uh, don't get me wrong, I've, done, I've been there, Sister Kathy. I confess, I've been there. But man, Lord Jesus tells Peter, this is what I got to do. And he said, uh, come on, let me talk to you, Jesus. We need to talk. Ste step in my office. It's never good, right, when an elder goes, we need to talk. Step in the office. I don't want to step. I don't want to go in the office. I don't, let's stay out here, Elder Charlie. I don't want to go in that office. No, come on, let's go to the office, right? He lost his mind. What happened? Because pride, right, pride. But this is why I love what Peter wrote. You guys know this. You are, say it with me, I am. I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I am his special person, special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. Say this word with me, proclaim. proclaim. So when we talk about it happened, we have to understand this word proclaim before we move further in worship. This word proclaimed, when you define it, number one is announce officially or publicly. Number two is indicate clearly. Proclaim. All the time. There you go. Hi, all the time, God is good. Amen. And don't you love that when a beloved child of God, you'd be in Walmart. Church family goes, God is good all the time. Right? You have people next to you going, my gosh, what is. God is good all the time, right? I'm not going to be embarrassed of my Lord Jesus, right? Oh, you, you can get mad, cuss me, do whatever you want. Guess what? You didn't die on that cross for me. Come on, right? My Lord Jesus died on that cross for me. Amen. And I'm not going to be ashamed of my Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So these are the two definitions of proclaim. And this is what we're going to kick off in 2 Samuel 11. In 2 Samuel 11, purposely, we blacked out the letters. It happened, that David, but David. It happened, that David, but David. When we talk about David, it's very important to understand the heart of David and how he is recognized, characterized, he is known as the man after God's own heart. Amen. Amen. And the beauty is, listen, I love this. Because being around church family, around worshipers, we are all moved by that. When we hear God say, that's the description of David. And if that blesses you, that's great. But guess what? It gets gooder and gooder. Because David, David was a man after God's own heart. You, say it with me, that's me. You have his heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have his heart. Well, pastor, explain. How do I have his heart? If you're happy and you know it. All right, Sydney. That's right. You better tell you. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. All right, so check this out. So you know that David is known to be after God's. So the Bible says that he was a shepherd. And as he was out in this shepherd, he played music. He worshipped. But can you imagine how hard his job was? You know, we're blessed with a brother, PJ, that he can tell you how hard it is as far as physically, mentally as well, spiritually not so much because he's anointed and in the overflow, amen? But, but what a toll it takes. But I love this picture. I know it's just a drawing, but then you see him, you know, with, with all the sheep, and he's just singing, praising God. You see, right now, Holy Spirit wants to flow through you if you would allow him. And God right now is saying, you know what, I love it when you just do your little crafts for me. Maybe it's weeding on the cricket, right? And you pluck those things and you're like, Lord Jesus, that's how you pluck the sin out of my life. You know, right? I mean, maybe it's construction, right? Maybe it's managing, maybe it's working in the office. Whatever it is, there's, there, there's a way that you bless God Almighty. Painting, right? Hallelujah. You paint. It's, it's not about, oh, my gosh, man, when is this going to be done? No, oh, this is the blood of Jesus. Look at this. Just cut. Right? But you know what, Brother Sidney? It's a choice. Right? You know why? It's easy for me to say because I ain't painting for 14 hours. 
right? Mr. Miyagi, I'm not, I'm not doing all that, right? Wax on, wax off. But see, it's a choice where Brother Sidney can say, Father, I thank you for this job. It was a divine orchestration of you. And now, Father, when I paint everything, I'm going to look at it as your blood. And oh, my goodness. And guess what you're doing, Brother Sidney? Between you and God Almighty, it's like playing that harp. It's like playing that harp. Amen. Oh, we got to move on. Praise God. Say it with me. It happened. When I say it happened, it's up to you, but you can say, what happened? Yeah. If I say it happened, you can say, if you're saved, then you know it. Clap your hand. So here in 1 Samuel 16, verse 13, it happened. <laughs> Through his faithfulness in worship, in blessing God and watching over his creatures, in just being faithful in just seeking God and spending time, David's opportunity came when this prophet, Samuel, came to anoint the next king. The beauty of this picture that many people don't know is that when the anointing of God takes place, the man, woman of God, because I'm speaking of the new covenant now, but back then the man of God would have a horn. And the anointing oil would be in the horn. And God Almighty says, go and I will show you who is the one that is going to be anointed that I select, right? And so I love this story because our brother Samuel goes there. Jesse, where's your boys at? Oh, it must be this one. Calls over the biggest, strongest one. I mean, just like, like Bruce right there, right? Bruce, come over here, right? And he checked it. Check this out. He went to anoint him, but the oil did not flow. Now, isn't this beautiful when you look at this? This is the horn of the oil, and already when you see this tilt, if I remove this lid, that's a strong, that's a strong lid. If I remove this lid, just based on the laws of this world, gravity, right? Right? Now, isn't it incredible that here is this man of God, this woman of God, that, check this out, God says, go and I'll show you. And he tipped it over and nothing took place. Once again, the word gets gooder and gooder. Because you are God's chosen. His anointing is flowing through your life every moment of every day. Amen. The oil is flowing over your life. Amen. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. Are you ready to live it? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Say it with me. It happened. This is what happened. Finally, it got to David. Prophet called, said, do you, have, do you have any more sons? And this is what's so cool about the word of God. Jesse's like, well, I got one. You could already see him going, I got one. He's out there. Right? Young one. The word of God says ruddy, but good looking. Man, you know how good looking you are if the Bible calls you good looking? Right? I'm talking about good looking. Amen? Hello? Why you laugh so? Let's speak loud. <laughs> and so, of course, he was anointed from that day forward, and God divinely orchestrated his steps from that point on. It happened. Saul, Saul, the king at that time, called on David. He heard of David. He called on David. And David, remember when I told you that he would play music and worship when he was watching the shepherds? Well, Saul, he would be tormented by a, by a distressing spirit. You know, just demonic. You know, tormenting. But when he called on David, when David would play his instrument... Not only did the Spirit leave, but Holy Spirit, His presence just covered the place. Amen? But the Word of God gets gooder and gooder. Because as you sit here, this is God's presence over your life 24-7 for all of eternity. Amen? 24-7 for all of eternity. Meaning, 
Brother, explain. All right, we're going in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, where this king had a call on David because David had the anointing from God. Come on now, somebody. And David had to come and bring that anointing with him. And as he worshiped, that overflowed. Can I get a hallelujah? In the same way, say it with me, same way, same way, Lord Jesus Christ came. <laughs> he died. Saved our souls and rose again. And you made a choice to say, I die in you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the glory of God is His Spirit lives in you for all of eternity. His presence is with you and in you for all of eternity. Oh, come on. Praise God. It happened. As you guys know, this is, the, this is one of the biggest things. I love preaching this message. It's been a while. David and Goliath. And say this word when we proclaim. We went through the two definitions of proclaim, but God wanted to show you in the word how David proclaimed victory. In the blue it says, this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. What's one of them? Dead. What I love about this is David knew this guy's name. But David did not call him by his name. You see, there's a devil in this world, demons, that want to speak over your life and give you the name of cancer. Give you the name of sickness. Give you the name of anxiety. Give you the name of whatever, Lyme disease, tick bite. Give you the name of poverty, lack. Give you the name of all this. It's up to you to identify and say, devil, you have no say in my life. God says so. I will cut your head off. I will cut your head off in Jesus' name. No more. Our God, our Father, is such a God of divine order where he can't go against himself. Oh, can we say that again? Our God, our Father, is such a God of order where he can't go against himself. Which means, Sister Ashley, what he puts in place, it stays for eternity. And he'll never go against it. So this is the beauty here in the Holy Spirit's church. Holy Spirit is teaching us tonight that if there's something going on in your life, quit giving it a name. And you call this thing an uncircumcised Philistine. And how dare you defy a beloved child of God. I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. So listen to this. He don't stop talking. He could have just stopped there. Don't you love it when a beloved child of God could say, uncircumcised Philistine, you dead. And he could just drop the mic and just go, it's time to take care of business, right? But he didn't. You know why? You know why God knew we'd be right here worshiping. And we need to hear this. This is what this brother says. Look, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Amen. He will deliver me. It has to come to the point, Brother Logan, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, son. Because guess what? The devil ain't going to be sick and tired of you being sick and tired. You yourself has to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Which means that when I say this doesn't belong no more, I die in you, Lord. That means you reign, Lord. You are in complete control. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It happened. Praise God. Let me show it to you right here. That's what happened. You see what the devil saw as this little ruddy, scrawny, 15-year-old kid. This is really what was going on. As you sit here in his holy house, as you live this blessed life, as you live this anointed vapor of a life, Listen, right now, all of heaven knows who you are. They know your name. 
They know every desire of your heart. They know all your family. They know all your friends. All of heaven right now is fighting for you. All of heaven. It's, it's, it's time, right? It's time for us. Remember, it's time for us to be on Team Jesus, and we need to start helping out the angels. Amen? Pastor, explain. How do I help out angels? You, you, what are you talking about? Speak life. Don't grumble. Don't complain. My beloved wife, she had to pull me aside today. Yeah, you're right, sis. Sister Jack is like, oh, oh yep, you're right, uh oh. It's one of those. Honey, I don't want to. It's like opening that door. We need to talk. I don't want to. And she told me stop grumbling, stop complaining. Listen, I'm a child of God like you. You hear me? I'm a beloved child of God just like you. If you judge me, that's between you and Holy Spirit. I know I can't. But I'm just confessing this to you because if we say that we're truly going to be accountable, then guess what? From your beloved wife or your husband, from an elder or a pastor, from a deacon, you would hear the word of God and you would receive it even if it hurts. And may I tell you, it hurt. Did it hurt what you tell me today? It hurt. But I looked at her and I said, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that you spoke. And I receive it. And no longer will I act this way. No longer will I speak this way. Thank you, Father, that you saved me. We have to keep in mind that when we open up grumbling and complaining, you open yourselves to darkness. And don't think... Don't think that the devil is going to be so concerned about your life that he'll only let one or two demons in. The devil will flood it, right? Say it with me, no more. No more. Hallelujah. It happened. Right. Let me show you. In the spring of the year at this time when the kings go out to battle, we're talking about David now. It happened, y'all getting lazy on me already, it happened, the unthinkable happened, because everything that we discussed in worship right now, and you feel the anointing of Holy Spirit flooding your heart and just filling this place, David got lazy. David got religious. I want to show you in the Word. And this is what's so sad right now because this is, this is the, the time we live in now. In the spring of the year at the time when kings, say it with me, kings, kings go out to battle. What is David? David's a king, right? That David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel as they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at home. This is a hard message to preach in this spiritual climate. Not here at Open Arms Community Church. This is Holy Spirit's house. Amen. And all you all worship God and we're, per we're persevering, we're pushing through. Amen. Whether it's conviction, whether it's uplifting, Father, just, just give it to me. Give it to me. Amen? Say it with me. Give it to me, Father. And, and God is. Father's just, Father's just flooding you. Hey, Brother DJ, how you doing? Church starts at 630. <laughs> give our brother a round of applause. Amen? Whoa, I love you, brother. We live in this climate now that I don't need to go to church. We have marriages right now that I don't feel like going, you go. I don't feel too good, let's just not go. All right, let's just not go. You see, this is what was going on right now in David. And if you don't believe me, we're going to get into the word now. But remember, here's God saying, this is where kings go. 
I'm looking at God's royalty right now. Can you applaud God for that? Because of Lord Jesus Christ, you're royalty. You're not garbage. You're not trash, right? You are royalty. Why am I royalty? Because his blood runs through your veins. Amen. 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 So check this out. It happened. David, everybody, where the king's supposed to be, they're out doing, come on. Where royalty is, David chose, I'm just going to stay home. I know for a fact, because Holy Spirit's showing me, God is ministering to many hearts right now. And I thank God that you're here on a Wednesday night, but it goes beyond this. Can I get an amen? amen. Because here you could just look at David on the rooftop. It happened. The evening. Evening. How in the world are you going to sleep till Evening. Now, don't get me wrong, if you work second shift or third shift, maybe that's understandable. But you're a king, you're royalty. Let's keep this simple, may, may I? Let's just keep this simple. Let's just say you got a regular job. I don't even know what regular is, but let's just say, right? Working nine to five, I don't know where to make a living. Right? Right? But it says right here, oh, <laughs> one evening... David arose from his bed. Now, may I say this? I'm going to throw myself under the bus. When I used to battle depression, anxiety, worry, as a Christian now, guess what? I didn't want to get out of bed. And guess what? I was the one that told Trish, you go to church. But God was dealing with me the entire time. And I thank God it was a short season but oh my goodness, what a demonic season that was. Because the more and more I decided to just curl up in a little fetal position and go to sleep, the worser and worser and worser and worser. Are y'all getting this? And worser I started to feel. And it finally had to come to terms with the Lord that God said, obviously, you're your God and I have nothing to do with you. Obviously, thank you, Brother PJ. Obviously, Joey, I'm throwing myself under the bus. If you're saved, then you know it. Clap your hands. <laughs> Amen. I'm throwing myself under the bus. Obviously, you're the God. You want nothing to do with me. You know what's sad is that there's many of us that hear this. But then what do we do with the Lord? Oh, but I'm saved by grace. You're actually trying to reason with God or you're trying to bargain yourself out of, oh, I'm covered by your blood. This is okay. It's not okay, church. It's not okay. I love it, beloved daughter. Right away you're like, it's not okay. Look, listen, listen, listen. That evening he got up. He finally woke up. He walked on the roof. And this is what I love about the word of God. Of the king's house. The Bible don't even want to call the house David's house. Right now at this moment, God Almighty is saying, this is a king's house. You're not acting like a king. You're not acting like royalty. You're acting defeated. Oh, let's get into this some more. You see the two in comparison? It happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle. David should be out battling. Right now, guess what? Right now, I know we're all sitting here worshiping a good and perfect father. Blessing Lord Jesus Christ and allowing his spirit. But I'm going to tell you right now, there is full on war taking place. But there's no greater, better, gooder place to be than right here with the children of God in God's house because God is the one fighting our battles. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And this is why God, Brother Mike, is saying, come. Right? Right now, that's why God is saying, we need to reach, we need to reach our family, our friends. We need to get right with ourselves. Amen. I need to get right with, like Trish pulled me aside today. 
I can't use being tired as an excuse. I couldn't even get it out of my mouth as an excuse. God rebuked me. And I said sorry to God and I said sorry to her as my wife. Because how dare I open the door and allow the enemy to start coming in. Amen. And glory to God. God gives us the weapons. Amen. Amen. Oh, you plead the blood of Jesus. Say with me, I plead the blood of Jesus. There's many of you who have anointing oil. You take your anointing oil out, right? You anoint yourself. You anoint your family. You anoint your children, right? It happened. Well, you can see Brother David. And forgive me, Brother David. It's just weird talking about this because you're so anointed. I did, that's why <laughs> I love you so much. That is, that, that's why I'm so uncomfortable because you're, you're just in the overflow. Hallelujah. So, but we're talking about this, okay? Not that brother David. Amen. This brother David, okay? And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman and someone said, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? You know, what's amazing is that I hear the tone when we read this scripture of this servant going, you know who that is, right? You know exactly who that is, but it was the condition of his heart in how he asked the question. And here is this servant saying, you know, you know who that is. Don't, don't act like you don't know. I mean, you're the king. It's like you could throw a rock. You see, when we get to this point in being distracted, that now we are dabbling into things that are not of God, it's that quick. Amen? Well, may I ask you, did... Bathsheba knock on his door? No. Did Bathsheba? <laughs> Will you stop? <laughs> Trish said, don't do that. Huh? <laughs> oh, I love you guys so much. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Brother William said, remember, it's on Facebook. <laughs> you notice that Bathsheba was just doing her thing. Did the devil force David to inquire? Oh, you, I, you guys are preaching the word. Did the devil make him? Oh, Brother Joey, this devil, I'll tell you what, this devil, he got me again. What are you talking about? Is Jesus your Lord? Because if he's not, then I understand. You don't have the blood of God. But if you have the blood of God, let me correct you. This devil is fleeing from you. But if you open yourself to demonic things, then guess what? That devil's going to say, oh, I'm allowed. Look, you see that little crack right there? Please, look at that door over there. You see that little crack right there? That's what the devil looks for in your life. The devil's like, hey, they didn't lock up. Tonight, I pray that we lock it up. Can I get an amen? Don't worry, it's G-rated. There ain't nothing naked up there, okay? But that's what happened. You know, you can see in an idle mindset, when someone is idle, when someone chooses to be lazy with God, when you don't have discipline in your relationship with the Lord, pastor, explain what is discipline. What is discipline? Number one, thanking God for Lord Jesus. Amen. That is number one. Number one, say it with me. I thank God, I thank God for, Lord Jesus. for Lord Jesus. Why is this number one? When you do that, Holy Spirit in you goes boom. His presence in you, just boom. He makes things just so obvious. He shows you what the devil's plots are. 
He shows you garbage. Now remember, we don't judge garbage. We pray for them. But my thing is, is listen. If you want God's best, why are you dumpster diving? <laughs> you want God's best, why are you dumpster diving? Amen? So this is what happened. A worshiper, right? A worshiper. Intimate with God. God continuously shows him favor and the power of his anointing in his worship life. How many of you show of hands has a worship life with the Lord? Praise God. For those of you who did not raise your hand, don't leave here tonight. Let us pray for you at this altar. Can I get an amen? amen. And it's through this anointing that God, he poured that oil. Remember, that oil is overflowing in your life as a child of God. Amen. And you'll never go dry. Amen. amen. Here we go. But you are, say with me, I am. A chosen generation. And listen to this. As a chosen generation, say with me, I am a royal priesthood. I'm looking at kings and queens. You know why? The king of kings lives in our hearts. Amen. Say it with me, the king of kings. Lord Jesus Christ lives in my heart. You said that right now. Glory to God. You are safe for all of eternity. And I pray that never gets old. <laughs> I pray that every time, every time you can have this revelation, that I'm not worthy. <laughs> but God, you send the worthy one. And even that, I can't even, listen, I could preach. I could preach for the remaining days of my life. I'll never come close. To know that kind of love. Say with me, I am a holy nation. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you. That's him grabbing you out of hell. That picture right there, that's him. Brother, explain. Pastor, explain. That happened 2,000 years ago. God is not on our time frame. Hallelujah. What God did back then, it was for us right now. And it's for future souls. Can I get an Amen. Hallelujah. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. When I, when, uh, I, thought, I thought we were done. When I was leaving, Holy Spirit said this is what he wants done, so we're just going to be obedient. To proclaim, remember this definition. Announce officially or publicly. Indicate clearly. Amen. Stand up on your feet with me, please. There's no question as far as how God proclaimed His love for you because He sent Lord Jesus. And God proclaimed it in Matthew 4. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. God proclaimed it and spoke. This is how God proclaimed His love for you, publicly. It's for all the world to see what we did to the perfect one who had no judgment, who had not one wrong thing to say, never did one thing wrong, loved, healed, delivered people. He publicly showed the whole world how much he loves you and indicate clearly this indication of God's love is for everlasting oh it gets gooder because this is Holy Spirit's church it gets gooder this indication that is clear of his love we call agape you know why it's forever it's now in you I love that shirt Say it with me, in me. I'm going to ask you. Brother Mike, can you turn on the lights for me, please? Thank you, my brother.
Tonight, you know the Father proclaimed His love for you. Tonight, you know the Father proclaimed His forgiveness over your life. Tonight, you hear and feel Holy Spirit running through your body. Some of you feels like warm honey all over your body right now. God is showing me some of you, it feels like actual fire, like your temperature is rising. Some of you, you feel needles on your shoulders, down your back, down your spine. He is God Almighty, and He wants nothing more than to bless you tonight in ways that you can never imagine. You, see, you know, sometimes when things happen, we act surprised. But tonight is a different night in His presence and His anointing. God has equipped us as royalty to be disciplined in our relationship with Lord Jesus Christ and to hold one another accountable. Will you allow Holy Spirit to flow through you like never before tonight at this altar? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you fell away, I'm going to ask you something right now that's going to echo for all of eternity. Would you be bold? Would you be bold? And would you raise your hand and say, I'm done running, that I want Jesus Christ as my Lord, that I want to receive Him fully? Thank you, Father. I see your hand. Auntie, can you come up? Come on. Beloved church family, we do have one song, but we're going to pray together. Amen. I know there's others out here, but I pray that you say this prayer with my beloved auntie. Listen, I am so thankful that she's like, tonight's the night. I don't want any question. Can I get an Amen. And will you join her in this prayer? Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, pray with me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I am sorry. I am sorry. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. I am one in you. I am one in you. Today. Today. I choose. I choose. To die in you. I die in you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. That you sealed me. You sealed me. For all of eternity. For all eternity. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. All of heaven. All of heaven's having a party. Amen. So let's not wait. Amen. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.